Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead on this beautiful sunny Texas day. Today we're talking about the two different methods to plant strawberries. I've done several strawberry planting videos in the past, but that was always about saving your strawberry plants, dividing them up, and multiplying your strawberries. This is different. These are from new bare root plants, and we're gonna be planting them in a hilled method and also a matted row method. It's important to know the difference between the two. We have always done matted rows in the past with our seascape strawberries. And we've had really great success with those strawberries over the years. We've frozen a lot of strawberries and freeze dried a lot of strawberries and actually even sold many strawberry plants to you. We are actually trying out a new strawberry variety this year called Albion. And this is from Territorial Seed Company. Let's first talk about the matted row method. That's where you let the runners from your plants just root and continue to fill in between all of your plants. Typically, when you replant in a matted row style, you start your plants about 18 inches apart from one another. In the past, when we did the matted row, we actually planted them closer together and it really filled everything in. Some people say it's more difficult to weed the strawberries if you're doing a matted row. But in our experience, the weeds were shaded out by the strawberry plants, so it was actually easier. Also, studies have shown that the production is lower from a matted row style of strawberry planting because your plant is putting out a lot of energy into all the runners that go everywhere. And it's expending a lot of energy doing that and taking it away from berry production on the mother plant. And some studies say that you will get smaller fruit because of that method as well. But in our experience, we usually have berries that are all different sizes, including huge ones. The matted row method is typically better for June bearing strawberries. Those are berries that just bear fruit in the middle of summer. Although our seascape strawberries are an ever bearing strawberry, we did the matted rows, didn't have a problem with it. But again, I'm not a berry farmer, I'm a home gardener. So if you are a farmer, then things might be a little bit different for production for you. The second method is the hill method, and those are planted about 12 inches from one another. And the main difference is all the little runners all season are cut off of them. A lot of people say that the hill method is more time consuming because you are constantly checking for runners and cutting them off. And then the runners aren't shading out the weeds between the mother plants. So you're also weeding a little bit more. But we are using this weed barrier fabric that we got from Farmer's Friend. You've seen this in a previous video and it's got pre-burned holes in it in certain patterns so that you don't have to do it yourself. They're nice and clean and it just lays down, plant those berries right in each hole. With the hilling method, studies have shown that the berries are larger and there's actually an increase in production because all of that energy is going to berry production on the mother plant and not the runner daughter plants. Regardless if you want to do the hilling method or the matted row method, both methods require the strawberries to be up off the ground at least six inches. In the past, we've always put them in our raised beds and these do drain well. However, if you leave the strawberries flat on the ground, no matter where you are, even if it's in a well draining area like this, you can get rot on the strawberries if there's a little bit of water that sits on the top. So when you're making your rows, you really want it crowned on the top where your plants are. So all that water can drain off. That's mostly going to be rainwater for us because we are going to run drip tape underneath our planting fabric. And then additionally, what I said about the weeds earlier, we're not really gonna have to worry about too much with this weed barrier fabric. But you do want those heavy rains that really happen here in the spring in East Texas to really shed off the top. We are gonna be using the hilled method with the weed barrier fabric. So we will be continuously clipping off those runners during the season. And we just freshly tilled this in-ground bed. I'm going to amend the soil first. Then I'll show you how we lay down our fabric and plant those strawberries. When you've got freshly tilled soil like this, it makes it a lot easier to create your hills because it is nice and soft. Now I'm not gonna tell you what's in this mixture for the amendments because everybody's garden is gonna be different. 
strawberries do need a certain nutrition, but my soil is deficient in certain things. If you haven't seen my video on what it's deficient in, go click at the top of the screen. I highly recommend each one of you get a soils test and a water test for your homestead because your water could be contaminating your soil like it is on ours. Once you've got everything amended the way it needs to be and the proper width and height, then you wanna lay your drip tape underneath your weed barrier fabric. On the edges of our weed fabric, we can do one of two things. We can either mound dirt on this, on one side of it, which really helps hold it down. Or if you don't have a lot of dirt or you're at an aisle or whatever it is on the other side, you're going to need some ground staples. Now that you have it healed, amended, and your fabric on in the position that you want it, it's time to plant your plants. Now, planting these too deep is detrimental to these little strawberries. So you don't wanna plant them lower than about right at the bottom of the little crown that's on it. Here's a diagram that'll show you the proper planting depth, and this is super important, so keep that in mind. We need to get these in the ground before these roots dry out. Give them a good watering. Even though you have your drip tape underneath, don't rely on that. You need to water these in when you put them in. When you get your bare root berries, some are not gonna be viable. They're just too small, and they look like they've dried up in shipping. You can see the difference between these two plants. This one is gonna produce a much better strawberry plant if this one even produces one at all. All right, friends, I've got 100 strawberry plants to plant. If you have any questions about those methods, please leave them for me in the comments section below the video. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how to multiply your strawberry plants every single season by at least a minimum of five times. Have a beautiful, blessed day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.